Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a lovely holiday time. Um, I myself took a bit of a break from drawing and posting and kind of social media in general just to let my batteries recharge uh, during this kind of very very busy time of year for me anyways. So I know this isn't something I do a lot of but I thought it would be fun to do just a tiny mini art haul over some of the uh, little cute art things I got uh, over the holiday season uh, and we can do a bit of a um let me grab my sketchbook here we can do a, ooh, a bit of a first impressions together because uh, I haven't tested out any of this stuff yet and I would like to so we're gonna just open this so we have some paper ready at our disposal and yeah we'll just get right into it no need to drag out the intro. Uh, so the first thing I got was um, just a kneaded eraser. I needed a new, <laughs> I needed a new one. <laughs> Funny joke. Uh, for those of you that might not know what this is, a kneaded eraser is basically like a pliable rubber eraser that doesn't leave, um, I don't think I have any lead in this pencil. Oh, I do. It doesn't leave any like eraser dust. Just a new one of those. It's the Stedler one, which I believe is the same type as that one. These are the funnest thing. These are the cutest thing. So I got these uh, funny stickers, and I love this one. I don't know if it'll focus in on him, but he just looks so funny and fat, and I love him. And then these are like squishy unicorns. So cute. Mitch picked these out. I love this one, too. I don't think it'll focus. Let me see if I can get it, too. Look at his face is just getting like squished into the cup. <laughs> this is a, so this is a matte screen protector for my iPad uh, to hopefully help with uh, the drawing. <laughs> Duh. I was struggling with the feeling of drawing on the glass, which is a common issue I know a lot of people who are using the iPad for the first time or just in general for drawing. Um, the sensation of the Apple Pencil on the glass screen is kind of off-putting, uh, especially if you're more of a traditional artist and you're used to that resistance that paper gives you. Mitch looked at a couple reviews and this one is apparently one of the best ones. Uh, I had mentioned the paper-like um, screen protector. I had heard that that one was really good, but I guess it's quite abrasive and can actually wear down as you draw on it and it's quite expensive so uh, I'm excited to see how that one feels we haven't put it on the iPad yet but we'll see um, these guys here so these are kind of like the the gems of the haul <laughs> uh, so lots of Copic markers um, I requested a, just some colors that I didn't have I have a lot of slide my collection over my vast collection wow look at them all <laughs> I have a lot of really bright colors and I needed some more neutrals um, I'm excited about this one because I wanted some darker skin tone options so we can swatch those together and then these I'm really interested in seeing how they work these are washable watercolor pen um, the brand is Miniso which is a kind of like an Asian I believe it's Korean, maybe Japanese, I'm not sure. Um, but it's this like store that just opened up in our city recently and then again in the mall. And I don't know what these are. This one's kind of already open. I like these colors. I don't know if it's supposed to behave like watercolor or like a paint pen. I'm unsure, but we'll see. Uh, and then this is just a 0.5 millimeter uh, pink sketching pen really cute I'm excited to try that out and this is it is a it's a calligraphy brush I'm pretty sure I'm a little hesitant to use this <laughs> I'm rubbish with uh, brush pens I have very shaky hands and brush pens and I just don't really communicate very well with each other so we'll see how that goes <laughs> I'm really excited about this this is Bristol paper um, it's extremely smooth, as Bristol should be. I got it, I like, mostly to help with my Copic markers, but what I found interesting is on the back, 
It says ideal for ink, felt tip pen, solvent based marker, watercolor, gouache, airbrush, pencil, and charcoal. I can't picture watercolor behaving very well on that paper. So that's an interesting claim because any other Bristol uh, sketch pads I've seen are like great for inks and markers. And that's kind of it. <laughs> so, uh, We'll see how that goes. I also know nothing. I have lots of Copic markers and I love them, but I really don't know much about how to use them properly, so I'm hoping that will kind of um, amp up my my marker game <laughs> a little bit. Uh, this is a toned gray mixed media paper, so this is quite thick. Uh, I don't draw a lot on toned paper. I do have a gray uh, toned sketchbook that I have a couple old sketches in. I love how pencil looks on gray paper. Um, if you've never seen toned paper before, um, let me just grab, oh, there's my little pencil case. Let me grab a kind of bright color. All right, so this is, so this is a Prismacolor sky blue light, almost white blue color. And I'll just do like a little bit here. See how nice that pops? I find like colored pencil on this type of paper is just so cool. It just is extremely vivid. But I don't do a lot with my colored pencils, so maybe this will be the time that I get into that. I don't know. So that's pretty much everything. So let's kind of crack open some of these things and get a little bit of a first impressions of them together. Alrighty, so the first page I have flipped to is my swatch page at the front here where you can see all the Copics and some of the Artist Loft markers I own. I realize now that I didn't leave myself a whole lot of space for new markers, <laughs> but we'll see what we can fit in there. So the first one is another colorless blender, which I talked about in one of my vlogs a little while ago. And most of the uh, Copics I own are the Copic Chow. They are A, I think the cutest Copics, which is why I like them, uh, and B, the art store that I get them from. They actually only sell uh, Copic Chows. The other art store in my area that you can get Copic markers from sell the Copic Sketch, which are these ones. They're a little bit bigger. I'm pretty sure these are like the standard Copic markers. And that art store is Michael's and they are super expensive there. So I don't often buy those ones. <laughs> I don't believe I have any duplicate colors, but we'll go ahead and start. So this one is lime green. Uh, this does not look very lime greeny to me, but we will see. It is a stunning green. It looks more lime on camera now that I'm looking at it, but on paper, I don't know if lime would be my first my first choice for it. I'm gonna label the colors later because I don't think you guys want to be here all day watching me scribble some marker colors on a piece of paper. I mean, I don't know, maybe you do, but I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, cool gray number two. Uh, so I actually have cool gray number one and number three, so this one is a good little, he's gonna go down here with his family. I'm trying to kind of swatch them next to colors that are similar just to kind of see the difference. This one seems a lot more purpley than these two. Uh, and I believe this one is actually cool gray number three, so I don't even need to swatch this one because I've already done so. Hang out up there with your friends. Whoa. Next up, we have Ice, ooh, Ice Ocean. Let's focus there. Which is uh, BG72. It looks very dark. Like It looks like it's going to be kind of a an intense green-blue. So let's swatch it kind of. Oh. It's a lot more gray than I was kind of expecting. This Copic is a B93, which is a light crockery blue. Interesting name. Interesting color. 
maybe this one will be more, yeah. That's more of like a blue. That's more of a teal. So these should almost switch places, I think. This is a really stunning color. Right there. I find, uh, I go through periods where I become really attracted to certain colors. And blue is just one of those ones that I always seem to go back to. This is E57 Light Walnut. Uh, I don't actually have many browns, so I'm just going to put it down here where I've sort of been gathering my more neutral tones. Look at how organized I am. <laughs> That's quite nice. It almost looks a lot like the Artist Loft's Burnt Sienna that I have. It looks really chocolatey on the camera, but in real life it almost... It's got like a very interesting red tone to it. It's really nice. And I'm not a huge, huge fan of many red browns, but it's quite stunning um, for a neutral color. This one here is Tea Rose. So it's a little bit more pink than the uh, powder pink. I can see where it gets the name Tea Rose. That's a really nice rosy pink color. Probably a good blush color. And then the last, for these guys, <laughs> black. <laughs> Just black. <laughs> uh, I don't own a black marker. I have this one, which is warm gray. So this is probably going to be really intense. Um, I'm going to just do it. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what I would use such a stark color for. Generally, if I want stark black, I would just reach for my ink. Yeah, it feels weird to have such a, a highly saturated dark marker. Odd. Um, so those are all the Copics. Wow, look at this wonderful, amazing uh, swatch sheet. <laughs> uh, let's go to a blank-ish page. You know what? You can see this really horrible sketch that I did that I'm really unhappy with and I'm going to fix or cover up probably. And we can try these guys. Oh, I don't know if you can see the tip there. It looks, um, focus. It's, it's like felty, so I thought it was going to be like a really juicy kind of pen. But it's not, it's not as hard to control as I was sort of thinking it would be. I don't think I can get, um, super thin lines with it because it does have quite a uh, chunky barrel on it. I wonder if it's waterproof. Probably not. It's a beautiful pen. It's really nice to hold. It's got a good hand feel, you know? You know when you hold something and it just feels like a perfectly weighted spoon? It just feels really nice. <laughs> Uh, and this is the jet stream. I have a feeling, ooh, ooh, oh yeah, this is a good sketching pen. Oh, I, I go completely silent because I really like, it's so thin. This is nice. Good job, Mitch. You picked out a really nice pen. And I'm super fussy with, like, my sketching pens when it comes to, like, ballpoint pens. Things like that. It feels as comfortable to use as a gel pen. In the sense where, like, the ink really wants to be free from the pen. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have that, like, grainy sort of... I don't know what I'm drawing here, but doesn't have that kind of dried look that some ballpoint pens have, which I do like. I really enjoy textured line art and pens, but this is so pleasant to use. Wow. I 
donked up the face there, but that's okay. Really nice. Really nice pen. It's so cute too, it matches my desk. <laughs> Fun, lovely little pen. And now these guys. Like, listen, doesn't that just sound like a paint pen? Ooh, all right. Let's move this over a little bit. Focus down there. Uh, let's do yellow first, because the cap for this one is, oh. I think, I, oh yeah, I gotta pump it first. Oh. Oh, this work. This is a pink pen. But I know that this store has its own version of of paint pens, and they're not this one. I don't know what this washable watercolor pen is. This is a pretty color, though. It's kind of, um, I don't know how well you can see it. Maybe it'll show up more in the purple one. It almost looks really chalky, which I know like Posca pens and paint pens sort of have that uh, chalkiness to them. It's part of their, kind of their charm. All right. So we're going to have to, ooh, ooh, look at that color kind of exploded out there a little bit. Ooh, oh no, it's leaking. Eh, I think I I might have been too aggressive with it. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, it's really thick and uh it's got a lot of air bubbles in it. But I love the color. Holy moly, is this a beautiful purple. This is like my, <laughs> this is like the Luria brand purple that I have my business card set as. That's gorgeous. I don't know, I don't know what I should do with these. Maybe I'll do a little video of uh, me drawing something with just these. Uh, I would probably want a couple more colors. I'm going to lift the book just to see if you guys can sort of, you can see it's still quite like wet. Uh, let me... So see all those like kind of bubbles, kind of like there, but it dries, huh, it dries more like a regular marker. This is a very interesting, this is an interesting product that I've never really seen before. I mean, to be fair, I haven't used many paint pens. Or, like, I've never used Posca pens, ever. So, I... Ooh, bump the camera. I'm not really sure what I'd do with those. I bet you they would look really nice on this paper. Let's give it a try. Let's draw... nice but I can't be you can't be too heavy-handed with this type of pen or I it almost feels like it's uh, like pulping the paper underneath it Ooh, this one looks really nice on it the purple is sort of drying to a degree where it doesn't look as nice I'm not going to lie, looking at it on camera, it looks way better than it does <laughs> in real life. Ah, uh, the accuracy of that statement. <laughs> yeah, th these are probably, I would say, out of everything, the most interesting art supply that I acquired. Oh, I missed a Copic! Oh, I forgot one! Oh, no! Let's just, no, I don't want to swatch it with my other ones. <laughs> That's probably, that was probably a mistake. That paint is probably going to squish on the other side. Oh, well. 
Um, let's put it next to this one. Ooh. This is, I think this is grayish lavender. No, this is, wow, way off. Super off. This one's called Champagne. It's E71. Grayish lavender it would be probably more like that color. Um, this is beautiful. I really like this little palette that's kind of happening in the bottom here. Uh, but yeah, Champagne. Again, wouldn't really call that color Champagne based on the champagnes that I have enjoyed in my life. But, uh... Oh, I'm making a huge mess. So that's about it. Thank you guys for sticking around while I doodled with some weird paint pens, did some swatches. Uh, I think the next time we chat, it will probably be 2019. <laughs> uh, a couple of people have, have requested a uh, one marker challenge video, and now that I've got a couple new lovely babies to add to my family of markers, that will probably be the next video, if not... Uh, a video coming up very sh soon, but I hope you all have a wonderful new year. It was lovely to talk to you again. I am just as awkward with the goodbyes for videos as I've always been, so have a wonderful day. I love you. Okay, bye!